very good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor. Where our top story continues to be AIA DMK crisis as Sasikala stakes came to form the government in Tamil Nadu, but uh, Paneer Selvam wants to withdraw his resignation. All eyes are on Raj Bhavan, even as governor says that he needs more time. Well, we'll continue tracking all those developments in Tamil Nadu. That and much more in this bulletin. Let's start with the headlines. Leaders of AIADMK factions meet governors separately. Sasikala takes claim to form government. Paneer Salvam says truth will prevail. Nagaland governor declares entire process of elections to urban local bodies in state as null and void. This after violent protests in state over 33% reservation to women in these polls. Uttar Pradesh all set for first phase of polling. 73 seats spread over 15 districts will vote on Saturday. India hands over extradition request of Vijay Malia to the UK. MEA says India has legitimate case against absconding liquor baron. And US President Donald Trump likely to approach the Supreme Court after an appeals court refuses to reinstate his controversial travel ban. Well, our top focus remains the political developments in Tamil Nadu, where well, the two factions of the AIDMK have met the governor separately. While Sasikala has the stake, they claim to form the government. Opanir Selvam has reportedly explained the circumstances under which he backed Sasikala for party legislature part, uh, leader post. The leaders of the rival factions of the AIADMK separately meeting Tamil Nadu governor Vidya Sagar Rao in Chennai on Thursday evening. Opanir Selvam, the caretaker chief minister, submitting a memorandum that reportedly explains the circumstances leading to his endorsing Sasikala for CM's post at the party meet on Sunday. Sasikala also meeting the governor for 40 minutes and staking claim to form the next government, saying that she has the majority of about 131 MLAs. <laughs> What matters right now in terms of the transition is only this. They elected MLAs, they elected MPs, they are completely with Chennai. There is no immediate reaction from the Raj Bhavan on the next course of action by the governor. In the house of 234 members, the AIA DMK had a slender lead over the opposition DMK and its alliance partners with 136 members. A seat has fallen vacant due to the demise of the party's leader Jay Jaralitha, bringing the number down to 135. Obanish Selvam camp has the open support of five MLAs, though it claims that there are silent supporters that will be known during voting. They say now the members are held captive. That itself shows that the other side is not uh, confident about their own support. If I am confident about my MLAs, I will not hold them as captive prisoners. Some opportunists. They are not as, uh, true cadres of ADMK. They are not true followers of Amma or true followers of uh, MGA. They are only opportunists. They are they only uh, gone with the OPS. Definitely we will form the government. Sinamma will be the chief, she will become the chief minister of Tamil Nadu. Don't worry. All the cadres of ADMK behind this, uh, behind Sinamma. Don't worry. Before meeting the governor, Sasikala visited Jalalitha's memorial at the Marina Beach and offered prayers. The symbolism not lost on anyone as it was the same spot from where Opanir Selvam raised a revolt. Sasikala has accused the DMK of trying to engineer the split in the party, a charge that the latter has denied. DMK working president M.K. Stalin saying that a decision on the party's future course of action will be taken at an appropriate time. While the Congress urged the government to ensure that constitutional mandate is respected and duties discharged as per constitutional provisions, 
The Tamil Nadu BJP said Paneer Selvam has worked wisely in the last two months. The party, however, said that while public support is with Paneer Selvam, in a democracy only numbers speak, and that the BJP is with the people of the state. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And on to the proceedings in Parliament uh, on uh, the last day of the first part of the budget session. While the protest by the Congress party and the other opposition parties on Thursday led to the adjournment of Rajya Sabha twice in the first half of the day, while the Congress demanded an apology from Prime Minister Narendra Modi over his remarks on his predecessor, the AIADMK was seeking action on the political situation in the state. Proceedings in the upper house began on Thursday with CPIM MP Sitaram Yachuri moving a notice for adjournment under rules 267 saying he was not allowed to respond after the Prime Minister's intervention in the motion of thanks to President's address. While the leader of the house objected to this motion, Deputy Chairman ruled it out saying the matter has already been discussed in the house. Government has the right to reply. That is precisely what we are saying they have not replied. Instead of replying, it was abusive and sometimes comments that were made. And, 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 sir, the ruling of the chair is being invoked. I want to say very clearly, the chair stood up, stood up and said, this is the practice in this house, that if a name is taken of a member present, then that member has the right to reply and the speaker yields. This has not been done in this instance. What can be a greater indictment than that? Under Rule 18, and that's the rule they wanted me to cite, the government has a right to reply. There is no right of any rejoinder provided for in that rule. Yes. Okay, so yesterday in the chair, the matter has been disposed of yesterday, so I cannot allow a rediscussion about that subject, therefore it is ruled out. Congress and the JDU also raised the remarks made by the Prime Minister against his predecessors on Wednesday. Prime Minister... Yesterday. Sir, this is what happened yesterday. Please, please. Sir? Sir? What is happening? He insulted the memory of Indira Gandhi, martyred Prime Minister of India. He referred to a book written by an executive assistant, did not even authenticate and place it here. He is the Prime Minister. Indira Gandhi and Prime no, Minister are not here. This should have both have gone. If you are, it's a matter of shame. Why didn't you give it at that point of time? Minister. No. He has condemned the Prime Minister. No, no. What he did is no, the unacceptable. See, this he has dragged the political debate to new laws. You could have... Kal jo hua hai, wo saari ki saari, ye jo parampara hai humari, jis shamae Pradhan Mantri ji bol rahe thai, mein us shamae intrivin karna chahata tha, aur do baat kehna chahata tha, wo sujao dena chahata tha, ki beat par zero, जीरो एक्सपोर्ट वो बकर दिया गया है और 9000 ड्यूटी और 9000 रुपए में एक कुंटल वो दाल बुलाई जा रही है प्रधानमंत्री जी मुझसे कहा कि शरद जी बैठिए आपको हम बाद में सुनाएंगे बोला 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 With the ruling benches countering them vociferously, Congress members trooped into the well raising slogans demanding an apology from the Prime Minister. AIA-DMK members too were in the well of the house demanding that Tamil Nadu Governor C. Vidya Sagar Rao should discharge his constitutional duty by swearing in VK Shashikala as the Chief Minister without wasting any more time. This led to an adjournment till 12 p.m. The protest continued during question hour as well, leading to another adjournment till 2 p.m. Vishal Daya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And the opposition parties on Thursday tore into the government for presenting a disappointing budget. Now, former finance minister P. Chidambaram termed the note ban as a terrible decision and alleged that the corruption and black money have continued to thrive even after 8th of November. The Prime Minister was not told the 2,400 individual currency, crore individual currency notes are going to be demonetized. He was not told that. Absolutely. He was not told that. Nor was he told that the printing capacity of all the four printing presses is only 300 crore notes a month. Any prime minister who's told that I am declaring illegal 2,400 crore notes 
but my capacity to print is only 300 crore notes, would have immediately done the arithmetic and said, Baba, this will take eight months to print these notes. If the Prime Minister knew that, he would not say things will become normal in a few days and the Finance Minister would not have said things will become normal next Wednesday. Finance Minister said things will become normal next Wednesday. Nor was the Prime Minister told that if the size and shape of the note is changed, the ATM machine will not accept it, not dispense notes. The Pepsi bottle will not fit into the Coca-Cola machine. The Coca-Cola bottle will not fit into the Pepsi machine. This is elementary. And they took two months to recalibrate and take it from me. Many ATMs have still not been recalibrated. Just walk with me, come with me. I did a 500 kilometer tour only four days ago. I drove from Tiruchi to Pamban near Rameshwaram and drove back to Tamjavu. Every ATM on the road is closed. In my town of Karekudi, I asked my people to go and take photographs at between 9.30 and 10. They went to 26 ATMs, all 26 closed. I went to Thirumala. Every bank has got a branch in Thirumala and every branch has got an ATM. Every ATM was closed. You still want to believe. You still want to believe that ATMs are functioning? Well, the former finance minister also criticized Prime Minister Narendra Modi over the words that he chose to attack his predecessor, Dr. Manmohan Singh. Now, initiating the discussion on the union budget, Jidamram accused the government of inventing the new narrative every day. He also called a demonetization the biggest scam of 2016, saying that he saw his first 2,000 rupee notes four days after it came into circulation, while many were caught with the cross worth new notes stashed away. Now please ask, 89 days or 90 days thereafter, where did it go from? Have you found out? Have you found out where this brand new 2,000 rupee note, how did it leak to these guys? You have not found out. What are you doing? This is the, that's why I said this is the biggest scam of 2016. Yeah, yeah. 2,000 rupee notes are printed and goes to these guys. Please remember, out of the four objectives of your Prime Minister, the fact that 2,000 rupee notes are found with engineers of the Kandla Port Trust or the Military Engineering Service or the Chief Engineers of Karnataka or the Chief Secretary of Tamil Nadu or the lawyer in Delhi means that corruption and black money have thrived after demonetization. It is both corruption and black money. But other leaders also participated in the debate on the union budget. Let's listen in. जब नोट बंदी कर सकती है, तो ऐसा कानून बनाया कि पूरे देश के नौजवानों को जो 18 साल से अधिक उम्र का हो जाए, जिसको वोट देने का अधिकार है, तो उसको नौकरी पाने का अधिकार होना चाहिए। लेकिन बजट में यहाँ कहीं अता पता नहीं है, कोई व्यवस्था नहीं है। नवंबर में ये सोचा गया कि पांच राज्यों में हमारा खाते में 15 लाख जमा करने का आश्वासन दिया था वो क्या हुआ जनता को हम क्या जवाब देंगे ऐसा कुछ कदम उठाया जाए ताकि कुछ आधी पैदा किया जाए और चुनावी चुनाव बीत जाने का बाद हम फिर अपना गीत संगीत गाते रहेंगे और बोलेंगे वो तो चुनावी जुमला था इट इज अबाउट एन इम्पोर्टेंट Focus of this government in managing its economy. That is disastrous for like our country's national economy and self-reliance. They are going ahead with privatization of all profit-making public sectors. Already Niti Aayog made a list of 74 CPSUs. And replying to the debate on the union budget in the Lok Sabha, well, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said that demonetization had helped widen the tax base he said that the main focus of the budget is the development of rural areas and the poor. And in response to the opposition, he also said that despite a global economic slowdown, the government had been able to cushion the economy and even managed to bring down the fiscal deficit. 
Today, from all over the country, it's clear that lakhs and crores of rupees has come into the banking system. This money from various banks through the currency chest will reach the Reserve Bank. Reserve Bank obviously is going to undertake an exercise of exactly counting the currency. Are counting machine hai. But as I as I said, it's a it's an exercise, it's an exercise which is time consuming. Reserve Bank may be able to give you some rough estimates, but after deleting, after deleting what could be the fake currency, etc., the Reserve Bank as an important institution will have to come out with the accurate figure. In breakfast news, time for a very short break. We'll be back with more news. problem The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. I work primarily in the area of algorithms. We are interested in finding out whether such a program can be made for solving a particular problem and how efficient that would be and how much time the computer is going to take. Looking at all of those aspects of problem solving. Watch Eureka with Professor Naveen Garg. Department of Computer Science and Engineering, IIT Delhi, on Rajya Sabha Television. The Harappan period is also called the Bronze Era. Extensive collection from the era shows the Indus artists were not only well versed in techniques of metallurgy, but also innovations in dance and performing arts. This is best seen in the famous Mohan Jodaro relay, the Indus dancing girl. No less impressive is the man drawing a bullock cart depicting agriculture activities. Bronze elephants, on the other hand, show domesticated animals used for transport. I'm Amritan Shira and you're watching Law of the Land. As a starting point, the concept of RTSL is very good and I'm very strongly supportive of it. It has not been done in the manner other issues have been dealt with. Bill is a significant development from the government. Watch Law of the Land on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break. Now, election bugle will be sounded off in the country's largest state as Uttar Pradesh begins voting in seven phases from tomorrow. Now, 73 constituencies spread over 15 districts will be voting to elect leaders from four main contenders, the Samajwadi Party, the Congress Party, the BSP, BJP and the Rashtriya Lok Dal. The first phase is expected to see a nail-biting finish with all the parties are trying to woo Muslim voters in the district including a riots guard Muzaffar Nagar as well as a Shamli and uh, the BJP has uh, yet again fielded uh, Muzaffar Nagar riots accused Emily Sangeet Singh Som and Suresh Rana on uh, Sardana and Thana seats. Well, phase one will also decide the fate of around 25 VIP seats in the region. Well, these include Noida, where Pankaj Singh, son of uh, Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh, and uh, Atroli, where Sandeep Singh, grandson of former UP Chief Minister Kalyan Singh, would be vying for their maiden entry in the UP polls. Well, another high-profile contest will be 
In, on the Mathura seat, so where three-time incumbent uh, Congress MLA Pradeep Mathur has been challenged by BJP national spokesperson Vishri Kant Sharma in the 2012 assembly election, the SP and BSP had bagged 24 seats each and BJP had 11 out of the 73. The region is also the stronghold of Rashtriya Lok Dal, which had bagged 9 seats and the Congress only 5. हमने अपने इलेक्शन ऑफिसर्स को ये निर्देश भी दे दिए हैं कि वो हमारे आचार संहिता का अनुपालन और उसका कार्यान्वयन बिना किसी भेदभाव के बिना किसी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी में डिस्क्रिमिनेट किए हुए उसका इंप्लीमेंटेशन सुनिश्चित करें क्योंकि कराना फेज वन में स्थित है हमने वहां के इलेक्शन से संबंधित जिला मजिस्ट्रेट पुलिस अधीक्षक और उनके आला अधिकारियों को ये आगरा की मीटिंग में निर्देश दिया है कि वो इस बात का प्रचार प्रसार करें इस बात को उनके क्षेत्रों में जहां से वो विस्थापित हुए हैं या जहां चले गए हैं उन, उनके यहां इसका प्रचार प्रसार करें कि वो यदि वापस आना चाहते हैं और अपना वोट डालना चाहते हैं उनको पूर्ण सुरक्षा प्रदान की जाए and you look at all the political rallies in poll bound states today well prime minister narendra modi will address election rally today in uh, UP's Bijnor, which goes to polls in the second phase of, uh, of elections on 15th of February. The Prime Minister will also address a rally in uh, Haridwar in Uttarakhand, also voting on 15th of February. Well, BJP President Amit Shah will be addressing four rallies in Uttar Pradesh for the third phase. He will be speaking at uh, Kanpur, Itawa, Unnao and Farukhabad. And Union Ministers Rajnath Singh and Nitin Gadkari will be focusing in Uttarakhand today where they will be addressing public rallies in uh, Jageshwar, Almora, Chamoli and capital Dehradun, among others. On the Samadhan News now, well, in a first of its kind event, a three-day national women's uh, parliament will be conducted in Amravati on the outskirts of uh, Vijaywara in Andhra Pradesh from today. Well, the event aims at strengthening the sense of social responsibility among, among women of India. The Women's Parliament is expected to witness women delegates from across the world taking part in the event. And the event is uh, being organized by the Andhra Pradesh Legislative Assembly in association with the MIT School of Government. Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu will be the chief patron of the conference. As many as the 91 women parliamentarians and hundreds of women leaders from India and abroad are expected to attend the event. Tibetan a spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, will be the special guest of honor. Well, the vision of the parliament is to enable and encourage social, political and economic empowerment of women in all strata of the society and generate new ideologies for women empowerment. On to the other top story now. In India has made an extradition request uh, for uh, the uh, beleaguered businessman Vijay Malaya to the United Kingdom on Thursday. Vijay Malaya is uh, facing cases of uh, loan default and other financial irregularities in India. Briefing the media, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Vikas Parop said that the request for Malaya's extradition received from CBI has been handed over to the UK High Commission in Delhi. Remember, the CBI in its chart sheet has alleged that Malaya diverted 2.54 billion rupees intended for Kingfisher Airlines from India. We have today handed over the request for extradition of Mr. Vijay Vittal Malia as received from the CBI to the UK High Commission in New Delhi. We have requested the UK side to extradite him to face trial in India. And India on Thursday lashed out at China for its remarks over the U.S.'s proposal to ban Jaish e Mohammed, the chief uh, Masood Azhar, at the United Nations, saying that if uh, there is a change in the Chinese position, there will be consensus as well. While well, reiterating India's stand on the issue, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Vikas Varu categorically say, stated that it is not a bilateral matter but a global matter. Well, Swarupa further added that the proposal was not moved by India but by three permanent members of the United Nations Security Council, that is the US, UK and, the Fr and France. 
The MEA also confirmed that the matter has been taken up uh, by both the Chinese embassy in New Delhi and in the foreign office in Beijing by the Indian embassy and the demarches have been served in the same. India's sharp reaction came a day after China defended its decision to block the U.S.-initiated proposal in the United Nations for designating Masood Azhar as a global terrorist, saying that the conditions had not been met for Beijing to back the move. The proposal was not moved by India, but by three permanent members of the U.N. Security Council, namely the United States, the United Kingdom and France. It is our understanding that this was a classic counter-terrorism proposal meant to proscribe a dreaded terrorist leader, Masood Azhar, whose organization, the jaish e Muhammad, has already been proscribed by the 1267 committee. We don't view this as a bilateral matter between India and Pakistan, but as an issue of global counter-terrorism. We hope that eventually China will also come around to accepting this view. Big story coming in from Nagaland, where the governor of the state on Thursday declared the municipal elections in the state as a null and void after strong public protest over 33% reservation of women in urban local bodies. Well, the state election commissioner in a notification said that following the governor's decision in the election program for the ULBs notified on 21st of December last year is now null and void. But the state government had earlier withheld the election process to 12 urban local bodies following clashes that left two people dead and several others injured. Meanwhile, statewide protests demanding the resignation of Chief Minister T.R. Zilian continued, alleging that the Chief Minister is responsible for unrest in the state. The protesters have refused to allow the functioning of government offices and are preventing government vehicles to ply on the roads. Now, Chief Minister T.R. Zilian met Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh on Thursday and apprised him of the situation in the state. And on to some international uh, news now, news coming in from the United States, uh, where uh, in a setback uh, to Donald Trump's efforts to ban visitors from seven uh, mainly Muslim countries, the U.S. Appeals uh, Court has refused to reinstate uh, the travel ban order. The Ninth U.S. Circuit uh, Court of Appeals said that it would not block a lower court ruling that halted the order it said that the government uh, had uh, not proved a ter terror threat that could uh, justify the ban. It also rejected the argument that the president uh, had a sole discretion to set immigration policy. On the other hand, the two U.S. states uh, that had challenged the travel ban said that the ban was unconstitutional and discriminated against Muslims. They convinced the judges that the order would uh, create a further chaos in the country. Meanwhile, Donald Trump responded to the ruling uh, with an angry tweet saying that national security was at risk and there could be a legal challenge. He then uh, gave an audio statement saying that it was a political decision. The Justice Department, uh, which made uh, representations to the appeals court on behalf of the White House, has said that it was reviewing the decision and is considering its options. Well, the case is now likely to end up at the U.S. Supreme Court. It's a political decision, and we're going to see them in court, and I look forward to doing it. So you believe the judges may... We have a situation where the security of our country is at stake, and it's a very, very serious situation. So we look forward, as I just said, to seeing them in court. And on to some sports news now. Well, India will resume their second innings on the second day today against Bangladesh in a one-off test at Rajiv Gandhi International Stadium in Hyderabad. Well, on the first day of the match, India dominated the proceedings as the hosts piled up 356 runs for the loss of three wickets. Well, opener Murli Vijay and captain Virat Kohli led the charge with contrasting style centuries. Vijay was bowled out on 108 runs after being involved in 178 runs second wicket partnership with Kohli. Well, Chiteshwar Pujara also contributed with a half century as Kohli remained not out on 1-1-1 at the end of day's play along with Ajinkya Rahane. Earlier, India had a poor start as the opener KL Rahul was bowled in the very first over of the match. Well, that's all in this edition of news. Thanks for watching.